In this video, we're going to take a look at a function in Excel called date diff. And as you can probably tell from the name, it's used to calculate the difference between two dates. So we need two dates if we're going to do this. So let's put in the beginning of one year. January, whoops, I meant to do January 1st. January 1st, 2020. And then... January 1st of the next year. So I've got two dates that are a year apart. And let's, um, let's, we'll leave a blank column here. Let's try out the date diff function. Let's go to our formulas tab and let's go to date and time. And they're in alphabetical order and there is no date diff function. So let's go to the insert function tab and um, no date diff. Okay, let's cancel out of that. So we got one more shot here. Let's go to our help. And let's type in date diff. And get help on date diff and the date diff function. So let's select that. And we get a little help window over here on the side. And it tells us it calculates the number of days, months, or years between two dates. And then there's a warning. And this warning here is the reason why it doesn't show up in those other two places. Uh, they basically don't want you to use it. The date diff function may calculate incorrect results under certain scenarios. Please see the known issues section of this article for further details, and that's down at the bottom. So the known issues, if you use the MD argument, you may get an incorrect result. Now, it looks like there are six possibilities for arguments. The only three that we're actually going to look at are the top three here, and there are no issues with these, so we're fine using date diff. So we will uh, try the date diff function. We can close this now. And let's go over here, and we're going to find out the difference between these two dates. So let's do equals date diff, and left parenthesis, and, you know, it would be nice if it told you what the arguments are here, since it does support the function, but we want the start date first, which is A1, and then the end date, which is A2, and then a comma, and then uh, a letter D for days, or Y for years, or M for months, and then close parentheses. And this is a leap year, 2020 is a leap year, so we get the number 366 days. Now, let's go up here and change the D to an M, and it doesn't have to be uppercase, it can be lowercase or uppercase, uh, it doesn't really care. And hit the Enter key, and it'll tell us that 12 months have passed. Okay. Now, we're going to make a little change here. We're going to back up one day. So, the day before January 1st, 2021 is 12 slash 31 slash 2020. Now it tells me that 11 months have passed, and the deal with the date diff function is it gives you the number of whole, this really doesn't apply with days, although if you were doing times in there, it, it would, but with the date diff function, it tells you the whole number of months, and until we get to January 1st of 2021, we have not completed the 12th month, so it gives us 11 months, regardless of how close we are to 12 months, if it's not 12 or more, we will get 11. So basically, it will calculate the month with a fraction, and it completely throws away the fraction, regardless of how close that fraction is to the next number. It could be 0.9999, and you'll still get 11. Okay, now let's go up here, and let's change that to years, and hit Enter, and you should be able to guess that we're going to get the number 0 for that, because we have not had a full year elapse. So if we want to change it so that an entire year has elapsed, we have to go one more day, which would be 1 slash 1 slash 2021, and hit Enter, and now we get a full year. So anytime you're just concerned about the whole number of days or months or years that have elapsed, you don't care about the fraction at all, uh, use the date diff function and stay away from those two-letter arguments that are described in the help 